Hello, now we are talking about effect of processing on nutrients. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on the topic today, effect of processing on nutrients. What is the loss of nutrient and where they occur? Nutrient loss in food occurs at different stages of food handling from purchase to the storage of food. Some losses are preventable using some precautions during food handling. On contrary, nutrients can be enhanced during pre-preparation and cooking of the food. Let us see what happens during processing and why these changes occur and where we can prevent them. There is a series of chemical reactions occur during processing, pre-preparation, cooking, transport and storage because the food is a live material. There are certain external and internal factors tend to increase or decrease the rate of reactions. Some are in our favor and some are not. Some are good, some are not. What are the changes which occur, which may affect the nutrient? There can be changes in the texture, color, nutrient, taste and flavor, shelf life and eventually the acceptability. And there are chances that whatever nutrient is present originally in the raw food may have some changes and sometimes the nutrient availability after the cooking is increased which our body can use it. Let us see which are the nutrient which are lost during processing, cooking or pre-preparation. And most soluble nutrients are vitamin B and vitamin C. They are not only the water soluble but they are heat sensitive also. So the loss of water soluble vitamins include vitamin B and vitamin C. And loss of fat soluble vitamins, sometimes vitamin A during frying it is lost, vitamin D sometimes it is lost. Minerals are a little more stable but the potassium may loss in certain cases. Some of the health compounds are lost when the water is thrown out. So they are leached out in the water. When we are giving the dry heat at high temperature and for longer time, there may be formation of some carcinogenic compound. Now, here are the factors which affects the changes or which increase the nutrient loss. Number one is heat. Number two, light. Number three, water. Number four, air. Number five, microorganisms. Number six, enzymes. Number seven, storage environment. And number eight, treatment to food. I'll show you the example. You are seeing the picture here, how this is turning the brown. This is apple which comes in a natural form. Now, if I cut this apple like this, what is the color here? Now, it is a natural cream color. And I will leave this for some time. So, this surface is exposed to the air. It will turn brown. Why? Because as soon as this is cut, it is coming in the contact of the air, the enzyme present in this is reacting with the air which is giving the brown color. So people sometimes understand because it is turning brown, so it contains more iron, but it is not so because of the reaction with the air, it turns brown. Now we will talk about the kind of losses which may occur to food. There can be intentional losses, there can be inevitable losses and there can be accidental losses. Let us see one by one. 
This is intentional losses. When enough care is not taken and loss occur during processing like peeling thick skin of the vegetable with the peeler. I will show you this. This is a peeler and we peel frequently the this. See the thickness of this and the same can be peeled or scraped I will say with the plain knife this way. This is also peeled and after peeling you can wash. So this layer you are throwing out and here when the layer is touched with this it is very thick you are losing lots of vitamins and other important compounds which are healthy in nature. So we should be very careful about the thickness of the peel you are throwing out in the dustbin. Now this is inevitable nutrient losses. What is do you mean by inevitable? That means you cannot avoid some kind of nutrient losses. The wheat is coming. You have to convert that wheat into the floor. You can see in the picture the wheat you are adding and the floor is there. So that is wheat has to be milled. So when the processing or cooking of food is essential to make it edible or palatable, that means you cannot avoid such kind of thing such as milling of the grain to bake the floor. And during milling, some of the nutrients, particularly vitamin B, will be lost every time you cannot avoid all these losses. Slowly, slowly we will learn how you can compensate those losses. Third one is accidental nutrient loss. What do you mean by that? Food is spoiled due to inefficient processing or storage systems over which the person has the least control. For example, the crop has spoiled in the field itself. You do not know, you do not have any control and during the transport that crop has spoiled and it is coming under the sun the whole day. So you have to be very careful while choosing the food item. Try to find out how the things has been stored because the during the storage system that may be the reason that is coming directly into the contact of the air. So the high risk nutrients like B vitamins, vitamin C, even the chlorophyll content may be lost. You must have observed some time the green leafy vegetable has turned into the yellow part. That means the carotenoids content looks yellow but on top of that there is a richness of the chlorophyll and you see the greenness in that. So that means chlorophyll is out and you are available there. So that means you are losing some of the highly beneficial nutrient compound if there is a. So these are the accidental nutrient losses. Now we will talk using one by one pre preparation method first then some of the preparation method how nutrient losses do occur in different methods. This is first washing. This is rice and you keep on adding the water to it and you keep on washing. Throw the water. One or two times it is okay. Then again and again you are washing. You are throwing out the water. So this way you are removing the water soluble vitamins from the rice. And if you soak for longer time and then wash it and there is a certainty that you are losing all of the water soluble vitamins particularly the vitamin B1. So in the green picture you are seeing here and the red cross is there. So that means 
they do not have sufficient amount of water soluble vitamins. Another activity we keep performing when we are preparing the vegetables cutting. Small cuttings of vegetables increases the surface area of the food pieces and exposed to the air hence increases the loss of vitamins. I will show you it is the same carrot. So, this carrot has the bigger size and this is the smaller size of the same carrot. If we see the total amount how many pieces are there? I cannot count how many pieces are there. So, that is means so if we see the amount of surface area of all these pieces is exposed to the air is more. So, that means the loss of vitamins will be higher then so we should cut the larger pieces of the vegetables. This is also very small pieces. So, and if it is kept open for longer time in the air we cannot see but there is a loss of vitamins from the vegetable or food. Another we see the washing. First thing we should remember wash the vegetables before peeling and cutting. In this picture you can see the whole potato is being washed. So, this is the potato and we will wash like this whole before cutting it. When we have to wash any kind of vegetables we should wash before cutting it. So, that the water soluble vitamin which are present inside the food will not be lost. Another important activity we need to cook the food. The foods like tomato we should cut just before the cooking to avoid the loss of nutrients. Sometime need the amount of water to cook the food during cooking. So, we need to be very careful to cook the vegetables using minimum amount of water or utilize the excess water in soups, dal and curries. If we need to cook that we should be careful some of the vegetables can be cooked easily without using extra amount of water. Green leafy vegetables contain more than 90 percent of water so, they can be cooked in its own water, they do not require to be cooked extra amount of water and thereby we can prevent the loss of nutrients. We have talked about at various stages of cooking, we keep on losing the vitamins and we have also talked about the inevitable loss of nutrient. So, we must use the raw foods using some vegetables in raw form in the form of salad on a regular basis not only add a crunch and color to the diet, but they are rich source of nutrient which can be present in the food and person can use them maximally. Very important thing to know overcooking sometime we add lots of water or sometime or some people like the overcooked vegetables and it is not desirable when it comes to the loss of nutrient because during overcooking the chemical reactions are keep on going for longer duration resulting in more loss of nutrients. Boiling, boiling is very easy convenient way to cook the food particularly the vegetables, pulses, etc., even the rice. And there may be more than 50 percent of the loss of nutrient during boiling of the vegetables particularly. Stirring, keep on stirring also increases the loss by breaking the cell wall of a nutrient gets evaporated. Hence, boiling should be done till the vegetable is tender and prefer steaming. Here we will say some of the nutrients are 
increase during cooking. So all is not lost. Cooking is required. Some of the particularly the fat soluble vitamins needs fat. Then only they will be available to the body. Even if you are steaming without fat, some amount of fat should be included particularly in the green leafy vegetables which are rich source of vitamin fat soluble vitamins they should be available to the body. Nowadays you must be listening or hearing the word antioxidants. Antioxidant compounds are numerous and they are healthy compounds which are present in almost all types of foods. In some cases the antioxidants compounds are released. Here you can see to avoid the loss of water soluble vitamins particularly vitamin C. The cooking should be done in covered pan. All the vitamins will evaporate if you are cooking in the open pan. Fruit should be cut just before eating and they should be consumed as much as in the natural form to get the best benefit of the fruits. Wash and consume apples, chiku, etc. without removing the skin. When we are using the wheat and other floors, it contains good amount of fiber in the form of choker or bran. If we keep sieving this and throwing the bran, so we are throwing the very good compound which are necessary for the body. Sometime the bran also contain because the adjoining I showed you at the grain, some of the weak complex are there and that is also lost. As I told you earlier, wash and soak dal and rice and use the soaking water for the cooking to save the water soluble vitamin. This is practically important for the rice but not for the dal. Dal should be soaked. Only the rice water should be used for saving the water soluble vitamins and some minerals. Sometimes we are using the soda particularly in the pulses to speed up the cooking. So avoid the use of cooking soda to preserve the nutrient otherwise adding soda will reduce the vitamin B1 content. This is a very interesting one. The vendor comes that vendor does not think twice that wherever the place is available whether the sun is there or not. He keeps the bottle outside the home and you also keep the bottle outside in the kitchen wherever the sunlight is also coming. You keep the milk in an open pan also keep the net over it sometimes but sun rays is coming through that and you are removing the vitamin B2 from the milk and milk is the only main source of vitamin B2. That is also called riboflavin. So we should be avoiding to keep the milk away from the sun rays. Milk often boil over if we are not keeping the eye. We are not enough attentive. So through this we are removing the good compound which are antioxidants in nature also. We are removing the cream also which is containing the essential nutrients in the so boiling over should not happen in milk. What changes occur during heating or cooking of the food? There can be some external changes which can be in color, flavor, odor, volume and texture. But some there are internal changes there can be some changes in the nutrient composition. Here is a change in color. On the above you are seeing the green leafy vegetable which is bright in color and within few minutes of heating this color is changed into the green color. So do not worry this is due to the enzymatic reaction when it comes into the contact of air and heat this happens in the color. But if you give the very short cooking time to soften the green leafy vegetable you are not losing any kind of vitamins particularly the carotenoids present in it. 
change in flavor. India is very popular about the food preparation using variety of spices to add aroma and flavor. And these spices do contain lots of nutrients and health promoting properties and that is added to the food. These are containing good amount of essential oils which are rich in health promoting properties. Here is a change in texture. When you are talking about the mashed potato, it contains a different amount of texture. If you are grating anything, if you are cutting anything and cereal pulses and root vegetables become soft on boiling. Similarly, if meat becomes soft and tender and egg because they are containing the protein. So protein food are cooked in a different way, provide a different kind of texture as compared to the food which are rich in starch or the carbohydrate. Here you can see the extent of nutrient loss. Maximum loss occurs in vitamin C followed by vitamin V. Then fats and oils are also reduced. The food contains good quality of essential fatty acids. Then vitamin A, then protein and least is minerals. We will talk about one by one, it is for the carbohydrate. They absorb water and swells up in presence of moist heat. You can see the rice is cooked. So the bursting of carbohydrate molecules makes the food pasty and sticky. When we are cooking the protein, the protein gets coagulated on heating and becomes tender and prolonged cooking of the protein rich food can make the food shriveled and hardened. When we are using the fat, normally fat do not change at optimum cooking temperature. Here the temperature using the fat is very very important. When the cooking at high heat and for prolonged period spoil and darken the fat. And here we have to be very very careful food cooked in such dark thick oil not only lose the taste and flavor but it may create some kind of compound which is very bad for the health. Excessive water is used, lots of vitamins are leached out in the cooking water. So if you are throwing away that water, that means you are throwing away all the nutritional quality of the food. So we must not throw that water, we can use that water for other food purposes. Very important I would like to make comment because I keep on saying most of the time the water soluble vitamins and what vitamin C are the high risk vitamins and they are lost. Why they are easily lost? Because when they come in the contact with the light, in contact with the air, in contact with the heat they oxidize. The moment they are oxidized, they are lost. We can save these nutrient or we can retain this nutrient to the maximum. How you can increase the nutrient in the food? At home level, there are three ways. Germination, fermentation and combination or supplementation. What can happen at manufacturing level is the fortification, enrichment and nowadays we are also having the biofortification. We will give you why we are talking about this enhancement of the nutrients. Germination increases the vitamin B and vitamin C. It not only improves the digestibility but also increase the availability of the nutrients like iron and zinc. Fermentation usually involves the microorganisms and it leaves the product or it leaves the product as you can see the double 
size of the dough and that makes the product light, fluffy and easy to digest. And we keep seeing this in the dosa batter, curd and this and this enhances the nutrient content and also some of the nutrients or healthy compounds are synthesized during the process of fermentation. There is an increase in the vitamin C and B complex. There is an easy digestibility as the carbohydrate protein are broken down into the simple form which is much more easy to digest. It imparts the taste and it improves the availability of the iron and calcium. Using two or more foods from different food groups is important here and they are combined in one meal. But when you combine in a meal a protein rich source and the carbohydrate rich source and the vitamin rich source then you will feel the meal is complete. Similar example of supplementation, it increases the nutritive value of the dish. It sometime it also happened the one nutrient which is missing in one food group can be complemented with the other food group. At manufacturing level, the fortification is done. In India, the fortification of the salt with iodine is very popular and known to most of the people. Vegetable oils are also fortified in some cases with vitamin A and vitamin D and nowadays very many processed foods are also coming in the market which are fortified with the minerals and some vitamins. And enrichment is another method which is used during the processing of the food by adding the nutrients. Sometimes leftovers are also used so that we can reuse the nutrients which otherwise we may have thrown out. We can enhance the value of the meal, we can impart the variety in the meal and we can also enhance the eatability, color, taste, flavor in the food. So if sometimes the vegetables are left, sometimes the boiled rice are left, we can make the some parathas, cutlets. Here are some of the examples I am showing you. The salad is left containing some kind of onion, tomato, green chilies and if you convert that all these vegetables you can use in the making the pulao or the vegetable. This is very easy. So you are not throwing out the nutrient. Sometime green leafy vegetables is left. So you add some amount of the flour then you can make the green parathas and enjoy that. So whole scenario of the picture here, you cannot win the game of health if you keep destroying the nutrients during processing. The food you eat can be either the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. Why I have shown you here? Because if you keep using the food in its whole form, keep preventing the loss of nutrient by various techniques. They are the best source of medicine as we keep on calling food is thy medicine. The prevention of the loss by various techniques we have talked about in this lesson today is very very important. Thank you.